Hello folks, welcome. Today I'm going to talk about how we verify the digital fingerprint of a file. And uh, generally we're going to be using this information when we download ISO images. All right, this one here is XFCE uh, for MX and this one is a Cinnamon desktop for Linux Mint. How do I know these are legitimate files when I download them? Well, we can do a verification on them. There's a very simple tool. Um, so we can also talk about some of the tools that you can find on different kind of distributions. But today I'm going to actually start with using very simple text files and I'll explain these in a second. So again, I am, I could be filming on any system, but I'm going to be talking about digital verifications of files. Okay. So we're going to be using 256 sum. It's uh, to verify that these files are legitimate and have the same digital fingerprint. I'm filming on MX23 Plasma, but this could be for any desktop. And I'll probably be doing two videos, uh, probably for MX and another one for a different distribution. But again, the tool should be available in your terminal to do this. And I'm going to do that first. And then I'll show you how you can use this tool here graphically. But I think explaining this in terminal first may be a better option for you. So I have two files here. And again, I'm filming in 1080. Please remember that and the subscription key is in the corner. So this file says just hello. It's not anything stupendous. So we can make it simple. This file also says hello. Now, depending on where I got these from, how do I compare these two to make sure they're identical? Well, we're going to find the digital fingerprint for them. Okay, and, and again, with Dolphin and this distribution, you can right click, but I'm going to show this using terminal. So you can understand this process. So I have a document for you. I'll give you an opportunity later to do a, a snapshot of this if you like, or maybe not a screenshot. In other words, you can always pause these videos and do a screenshot. I'll show this probably maybe twice today. So um, I wrote this up to explain what a 256 sum is. So um, generally it's called a hash or basic digital fingerprint of a file. And more importantly, we're mostly using that for ISOs. But in the sample here, I am just using a text file to let you see this. And I'm going to compare the two text files. That's why I wrote this up this way to check out the fingerprint to make sure they match. And this is uh, something that uh, some people do and some people do not. But you should always go, if you're doing ISO images, go directly to the Linux distributor and download those from there. Okay, but we're going to start with using simple text files. <clears throat> Just using console. All right, so if you're not too sure about uh, this uh, desktop, uh, it uses KRunner in the background. And if you just type in K, it'll, it should find console, another name for terminal. All right, up here, you'll see the word bash. So it's using born again shell. Let me make that bigger for you. Troll shift plus 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 mark is our user for today. So an LS command just is a uh, list contents. And uh, you can see that I'm not into Mark's home folder. This is more of a, the general uh, root folder. So you'll see that uh, home in blue. So I'll need to CD into that. And then I'll do another LS. And now you can see I have three users. Now Linux is literal. So for some of you folks, maybe you are still kind of learning terminal. But in either case, if I type in CD Mark in lowercase, I'll get a syntax error. Born again shell. Um, bash is what that stands for. And mark, no such file or directory. That's because I didn't spell it right. It has an uppercase M. So let's do this properly. Now I'm in Mark's home folder. So you can probably see all the stuff going across the screen here and um, maybe a little bit bigger, but I'm going to do a, a summary on both of these using SHA 256. Excuse me, I need more coffee here. 
Uh, so I'm going to verify that this file is the same as that one. So let me jump on over for a second and explain what SHA is. SHA is a digital fingerprint, and you can find this on uh, Wikipedia. Let me click that. It's a secure hash algorithm, a little fancy word for a digital fingerprint. Again, you can look for different definitions online, but um, I'm going to be doing that information. And again, what I'm going to be doing here is using my document like this, and we're going to perform an SHA-256 sum. You should have this installed. Okay. So SHA-256 sum, all one word, then space. And then I'm going to do test.txt. Then I'll, uh, after I do this, compare those two files, then we're going to compare the real ISOs in my download folder. Okay, that is the digital fingerprint for that file. Starts with a 66 alpha and ends up with uh, 5 franc 18. 5F18. So that's the fingerprint for that file. What about this one? All right, since this one is a copy of that one and it has a space and a bracket, you'll see these little, what looks to be like tick marks, single quotes. They can be found to the left of your enter key. You'll have a double quote and a single quote, or a little tick mark if you want to call it that, a little nickname for it. So I can either do that by hitting the arrow key on my keyboard, or I can type the whole thing. So I'm going to type the whole thing. SHA256SUM, all one word. Why am I showing this in terminal? Because this can be done on other machines. That's why. Then we'll talk about the graphical toward the latter part of this video. All right, so what if I type in test space that bracket and dot txt? What would you think it'll happen? I have a syntax error, meaning that um, what are you trying to type is what it's trying to tell me. So that's bash stands for born again shell, by the way, if you're wondering, that's up at the top here. So born again shell is telling me, I don't understand what you're doing. All right, so we are going to do this the correct way. So it's uh, SHA256 sum space and now I'm going to actually type it just like they have it here. Starting with that little tick mark, if you want to call it that, or single quote on the side. Test space and TXT. Do not forget the other one. It has to end with that also. Single quote beginning, single quote ending. Now you can see that this file here, the word test.txt, has the same 256. So these files are identical. That's how I know the difference, because they both match. 66 alpha, 35 franc 18 on both of them. All right, now let's talk about real images. We're going to be testing these two, and but we're using terminal, okay? Let me minimize this for a second and open up a web browser. I'll go directly to MX's homepage and go to the download section. So I downloaded this version here. That is what is sitting in my download folder currently. So. I just didn't want to download it while I was filming because that'll take extra time. But we're going to verify that that file is legitimate. So I downloaded it and then I can scroll down to verification. And we're going to find that image here with that number on it. I will scroll down a little bit further because what I'm going to do is superimpose the console on top of it. So you can see the number down right below my console. All right, so I will punch up clear. Hopefully you understood what I just did with those text files. All I'm 
doing with those two text files is to make sure that the original and the copy are identical, and they are. Now I'm going to punch up clear and do another LS. All right, so you can probably see I have a lot of stuff in blue. Those are directories or what we call folders for simple. Desktop, documents, and downloads all start with a D. I want to change directory into downloads. That's where those ISOs are hanging out. So what I can do is do a shortcut. I can do a CD space, uppercase D. Now, which D is it? Desktop, documents, or downloads? Well, we need to give it some more characters. There's an O. Well, they could guess at that but with documents or downloads, not enough characters. So I'm going to put in a W and then hit the tab key, then enter. You can type the whole thing if you like. I'm just showing you a shortcut. Now I'm going to do an LS. So we have two ISOs sitting there, one with Linux Mint and one with MX. And then I have uh, three more directories, my iPhone, Tmint Lap, and Tmint 21. Those are just folders. We're going to deal with the ones in the white. So uh, basically, we are going to be running a summary on that. So can I use my upper arrow key to go find those commands? Yes. I'll cycle through them. Then I will just wipe that out and then spacebar. Now, I don't want to type in that mx-23.4 underscore x64.iso. I'm just going to type in mx and hit the tab key to make it simple. Now, the calculation for this it takes a second or two. Well, maybe more than that, maybe five. But it's going to calculate nonetheless and give me a number. If you look down here, my web page is still open. It starts with 93 echo, 93 echo, and ends up with um, ed, ed, and that's exactly what we have. So that means that this file matches what MX has on their web page for SHA-256. What about Linux Mint? We're going to do that also. Um, I like to go through DistroWatch. Uh, it's just a simple link because of the fact that uh, all the distributions or the major ones are listed here, so I can click that rather easily instead of having a whole bunch of tabs. And um, I'll go to Mint's website and the download section. And what I did earlier is I downloaded a version of Cinnamon. Okay, but it also, you know, that from one of their mirrors. Now, how do I validate that? I can do that here also. Um, their, their system just produces a simple white file. And what I'm looking for is this number right here. So we have the Linux Mint ISO already here. All right. If you want, I'll punch up clear if the screen is too busy for you. I'll do another LS. So I'm going to do the upper arrow key again and just wipe that out. So I don't have to type that SAJ256. After the M, one space, and then um, the file starts with Linux Mint 22 dash cinnamon dash 64 bit dot ISO. Well, that's a mouthful. L I N is a little shorter for me, and tab. It puts the whole thing in there. And then I'll calculate. It takes a second. Let me uh, reduce the spacing. So I can yank this thing down. Seven alpha zero, seven alpha zero, ending with uh, 29 Bravo eight Frank. That matches down to a T. So then I can assume that that file is also good with SHA 256. All right, now let's get into graphical. So since this is a Dolphin for MX23, we can also do the same with these files. Right click, properties, checksum, SHA 256, calculating. And you remember that ended up with ED, ED, when I was in terminal or console, ED, ED, 93 echo. So we can, Without me uh, jumping back to the web page, uh, just trust me, that's a valid number. 
All right, the same thing with the Linux Mint, right click, properties, checksum, calculate. Keep in mind, I'm just doing an SHA-256. All right, there is other stuff too, but today's video is just on SHA-256. Anyways, if you recall, that is the exact same number off of Linux Mint's website. Okay, so in either case, you could also copy that. Right click, create new. Great new, let's try that again. Uh, I'll just leave the name, paste the number. All right, so anyways, I'll do a save. All right, one more opportunity if you are wanting to understand this uh, in a, maybe a screenshot, of what 256 sum is. Again, uh, it is the check sum, sometimes called hash, which is basically the digital fingerprint of the file. And if you recall, when I started the video, I did two simple text files to give you that example with. But generally, we are just trying to verify that these files are identical. And the main purpose uh, for most of you folks is to verify that your ISO downloads are legitimate. In other words, they haven't been tampered with. In most cases, that is sufficient to run a 256. Okay, just comparing images, or in this case, comparing simple text files. Again, you can always hit pause, do a screenshot if you like. Other than that, thank you for watching.